Hey everyone, it's Julio Ramon here at ICANN and in today's video I'm going to show you how to set up the new and improved Remote Air Pro by PD Move. Now what I have here is the second generation of the Remote Air Pro. Now this system has mostly remained the same, but some key improvements have been made, most notably to the hand controller. Now as you can see here, it looks a lot like the previous generation. However, an improvement has been made, which comes in a rocker switch that has been added to the hand grip on the back. Now with this pressure sensitive switch, you now have better control over the zoom on your lens. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to talk a little bit about each piece that comes in this three motor kit and from there we are going to mount it to this Panasonic Vericam LT and I'm going to show you how to set it up properly using this 50 to 135 Tokina zoom lens. Now this kit comes with, I'll point out what we already talked about, we have the hand controller, we have the receiver motor, we have two standard slave motors, we have three 19 to 15 millimeter rod adapters, we have two short antennas, two long antennas, two daisy chain limo cables, one D-tap to limo power cable, and on this end we have a four pin limo to USB cable that is used with the wall adapter. We have a lanyard with a quarter 20 that screws directly underneath the hand controller. We have two glow in the dark marking discs. We have one USB to lightning power cable. And finally, we have three different mounts, one, two, and three, that are used to mount a wide variety of iOS devices. You can mount the iPhone 6, 6S, 7, iPhone 6 Plus, 6S Plus, 7 Plus, or even an iPod Touch. Now, I will go into detail on the hand controller in a separate video. But in this video here, I'm going to talk about each different motor, and I'm going to show you how to set the motors up onto your camera. Now here I have the Panasonic Vericam, and I have a 15 millimeter rod system, as you can see here, and our 50 to 135 Tokina lens that has 0.8 threading on the iris, zoom, and focus, which we're going to need to mount the Remote Air Pro. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to mount one of the slave motors first. Now this here is the slave motor. And as you can see here we have a 0.8 pitch gear, we have a 19 millimeter rod adapter that you can actually remove, and on the side here we have two 6 pin limo ports. Now what these ports are used for, you use these ports to daisy chain each motor together or to run power from your DTAP cable here. So we're going to mount one of these first, and but since we are using a 15 millimeter rod system, we need to grab one of our 15 millimeter to 19 adapters, slide that in, and now we're going to slide this in place and mount it. Let me adjust this here to the iris, match the gears. And we will tighten down on the knob. Okay. So let me make sure that's tight. There we go. All right. So there. We have one motor. We have our iris set up. Next, we will grab another slave motor. This one, same as the other. We are going to grab our 19 to 15 millimeter adapter. Let's pop that in. We'll bring this motor over to our rod. Now the great thing about these rod adapters is that you can flip them. So if you need to get this knob out of the way for more clearance, you can actually take it out, flip it around, go right back in, and now our knob position is lower, giving us more clearance to line it up and avoid hitting the lens. So we will mount that in place, tighten that down, All right, okay. 
Next, and finally, we have the receiver motor. Now this motor is different from the previous two. As you can see here, it has a screen located on the side of the motor. Now what this screen is going to tell you, it's actually going to give you information such as your signal strength, your wireless channel, it's going to tell you how much voltage this motor is using, and also how much battery life your hand control unit has left. Another difference is that on the side here, you only have one 6-pin LIMO input here because the other port here is used for your antenna. And you can use the short or long one. Either one works depending on your situation. Now, here, I will grab the 19 to 15 millimeter rod adapter, pop this one in, and we are going to mount this receiver motor to the front. Slide that in, and this will be on our focus channel. So tighten that in place. And there we go. We have all three motors mounted. We have two slave motors on the iris zoom and our receiver motor on the focus. Next, what we have to do now is we have to connect all these motors together and run power to them. So to do that, we will use our six pin Limo daisy chain cables. We have one, two, and we'll use these to connect them together. So first, we will plug this right into our receiver motor. Take the other end, plug it in to the slave motor. And we will continue the process using the other cable from the zoom motor to the iris motor. And there we go. So there we have all three motors. All we need to do now is run power to them. So we will take our DTAP to six pin limo cable and we will plug into the iris motor here. Plug that in. Once we're in, we'll take our DTAP and plug that in to the back of our battery plate. And now we have power running through each motor and we're set and we're ready to go. So from here, what we have to do is we have to power on each motor. Now in order to do that, you have to press and hold the button that is located on the bottom of each motor. Just to give you an example of what that looks like, take the receiver motor out, it's this silver button located right underneath. Each motor has that button. So we will place that back. Mount that back on the rod. So, to power it on, press and hold. And as you can see here, our motor is on. Now when the motor is turned on, not only will the screen power up, but there is an indicator light on each motor that will light up once it's on. Now I'll turn this one around. As you can see here, we have our receiver motor with a red indicator light. And I'll tell you what that means in a second. But we will go ahead and press and hold the power button on each of the other motors. Now, as you can see, they are different colors. We have red on our focus, we have blue on our zoom motor, and green on our iris. Now, each motor has a different color for a reason. Each color represents a different channel. The colors that we have are red, green, and blue. Red will be for your focus, green will be for your zoom, and blue will be for your iris. So we need to match these colors up to the correct channel that we are mounted on. As you can see here, the receiver is red. We are on the red, so that's correct. The zoom motor is set to blue, which is incorrect. We need to change that to green. And finally, here we have green on the iris, that is also incorrect. So what we need to do is we need to flip-flop these two motors. The iris needs to be blue, the zoom needs to be green. So, in order to do that, 
we take that power button that's on the bottom of each motor and when we tap it twice we will alternate through red, green, and blue. So right now we're set to blue. If we tap that button on the bottom twice, one, two, it changes to red. Again, we don't need red. Let's tap it again twice, one, two. Now we're set to green. That's what we want. So we're gonna do the same thing for the iris until we get to blue. One, two, blue. So we're all set up. We have our colors matching to the correct channel. We have power running through each motor. Everything's turned on and we're ready to go. Stick around for part two of our video where I show you how to use the hand control unit and show you how we sync this to the motors that we already have set up on our camera. My name is Julio Ramon. Thanks for watching.